Yesterday we had you know, discussed up to this point where we had taken two of the UN reports uh, trying to suggest that uh, violence, uh, aggressive uh, forms of behavior, they are actually learned. You know, if you live in a society where certain things are practiced, you realize that you do not uh, see the uh, problem in terms of practicing those things. So, all those although uh, other societies might not appreciate it uh, or within the society itself no uh, some uh, isolated pockets might not appreciate it but still um, a large number of people do not see problem in it and we saw the example where uh, women themselves were uh, advocating that yes yes uh, if husbands uh, know physically abuse them uh, they become violent they become very aggressive okay they have a justification okay and surprisingly uh, unwed adolescents they also you know started saying yes yes now there there is a reason for doing all this okay uh, today we are uh, coming to a little different thing see till now uh, throughout this course what we have been doing is that we have been exclusively focusing on the micro aspect of human behavior for the first time in this course, we are taking a macro view also okay. and we are not only right now looking at uh, aggressive behavior shown by individual rather we are also looking at uh, aggressions shown by a large number of people in a group. Okay. Uh, this type of uh, approach we will also take little later when we will come to displaced forms of uh, aggressive behavior. Now, you can think of uh, aggression as an approach behavior that is how uh, know, uh, you look at such type of uh, behavior in terms of their directionality component of emotion. Okay. Uh, emotion all basic emotions are explained in terms of their valences, okay. so positive or negative. You remember when we were talking about uh, uh, emotion, appraisal of emotion and how they uh, facilitate our uh, adjustment there also we had divided emotion in as goal congruent and goal incongruent emotions okay and goal congruent emotions were nothing they were all positive emotions and all goal incongruent emotions were negative emotions so in negative and positive uh, is basically the valency that you can attribute to an emotion the second part of uh, uh, no characteristic that you can attach to the basic emotion is the directionality component so whether that state of emotion makes you approach or does it make you withdraw. So, approach avoidance is the directionality component in emotion and aggression by default is considered to be of the nature which actually makes you okay, impulsively approach the source of anger and this approach behavior could be of two types. One can show hostile aggression or one can show something what is called as cultural aggression. Okay. Now, hostile aggression basically involves anger and behavior okay, which is basically intended to inflict harm upon either a person or a group or their belongings. Okay. So, you develop uh, hostility towards an individual, you uh, become hostile towards a group. Okay or if you do not find the individual or the group then you start destroying their properties their belongings okay because you somewhere attach the belongings of an individual or a group as uh, no their own uh, properties and therefore if something which is used by a group say for example place of worship for example now place of worship usually doesn't belong to an individual it is collectively shared by a large number of people who share that type of belief and practice. But when you destroy a place of worship, you are hurting the sentiments of people who actually have invested their belief and practice in that place of worship. Okay. And 
human beings they understand this and therefore, if I cannot show my hostility directly uh, on you, then I will take pleasure in harming your properties, okay. which in turn will psychologically be equally uh, no boosting for me, because I have finally, created some harm to you. It could be seen in uh, no very small, small forms, uh, where uh, uh, say you turn extremely angry okay, and in that state of uh, anger, you just go and hit the other individual. Okay. When you have a fight between two halls, I think one semester back you had one such phenomenon, is that so? Do not tell me no. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so, you take uh, no pride in uh, getting associated with a hall. Okay. So, is it uh, no hall 2 and is it uh, no the GH and uh, somebody had said something. So, we will go in a group and I do not consider that it is a fight between x and y, but all those who share the space with x and all those who share the space with y and a big clash. Okay. This is common uh, in all academic institutions, in IITs of course, you see it uh, at a very lower magnitude. Uh, in the university system, usually you know where you have a large number of student population staying inside the campus, you know, it is a huge problem you know, between departments, between hostels, between faculties. So, faculties means one group of departments versus the other group of departments, you know, huge, huge, huge things. You know. And you take pride in doing many things, no? including the fact that uh, no, you uh, would like to show your hostile aggression, because the examination <laughs> paper okay, had questions which were not taught to you. And hence you go to the principal's office, you do not find the principal and it is a very common scene, no? you break uh, two, three flower pots there. No? Uh, burning of fire, these uh, tubes, no? you put uh, tubes and tires on fire no? and block roads, very common. Okay. So, these are considered to be hostile aggression no? and hostile aggression usually has you know, a set pattern. But today, what we would also discuss is, what is called as cultural aggression. Okay. Now, cultural aggression may take the form of vigorous attack on other people or situations with an intention of controlling, manipulating or modifying them. So, this is not a small form of hostile aggression. In hostile aggression, what do we do? Say, if I turn hostile, I just go fire at you and then it is over. Cultural aggression is far ahead of it. No? So, this is basically a planned vigorous attack on the other group with a much bigger goal. And the goal is that I want to control the other people, I want to manipulate other people, I want to modify other people. Most of the episodes of uh, know, group violence, these things are uh, know, not good to hear, but if you analyze the uh, conflict between uh, different uh, disciples within the same religion. Okay. Hinduism had uh, no tough fight between the disciples of uh, uh, the Vaishnavites and the Shaivites. No, if you read the uh, history of religion in this country, you will find that it was not only a ideological fight; it went even to a fight of a physical nature. Uh, in Islam, you till date you find uh, know, the fight between uh, the Shias and the Sunnis. Okay. Protestants and Catholics had uh, know, long history of uh, conflict. And remember all these uh, religions, their internal conflicts were not, sub it started with uh, ideological differences, okay. difference in terms of uh, practices, but later on it did not remain, did not remain restricted only to the practices, rather it went to a forceful implementation of my way of life. Okay. Most of the retaliations you would find that they are of this nature, okay, where the whole tendency is to not only put other person into captive uh, custody, but 
to ensure that they would lead the life that I want. Okay. Uh, now, Saddam Hussein is gone, uh, but if you read the whole history of uh, know how the Iraqi forces were uh, trying to manipulate and control uh, the Kurd population, okay. there is a whole long history there. Okay. I am not uh, good at history, therefore I cannot tell you the nuances of it, but broadly I know that uh, yes, okay, there the whole attempt was uh, know that either you accept my way of life or I threaten that you will lose your life. Okay. Many such places in the world you would find uh, that after the dictator was uh, no more, uh, people have unearthed mass graves there okay. and these were the people who were in conflict with the powerful individuals on the other side. Okay. So, cultural aggression that way is uh, no far more uh, no uh, dangerous compared to uh, having a hostile form of aggression between two individuals or two groups of individuals. Because when you engage in hostile aggression, you do not want to uh, manipulate and control the other individual, you do not want to modify the behavior of the individual forever. The worst uh, perhaps in, uh, it is very common in uh, war histories, but the worst example uh, know, uh, I that comes to my mind is uh, when the Bosnia-Herzegovina conflict was on. Okay. Uh, all the wars have uh, a dark history, not only of killing, bloodshed, of atrocities, but also of uh, know, uh, sexual crime against women. This is uniform, all wars. When uh, the Bosnia-Herzegovina conflict was on, one of uh, the <coughs> army officers was later on uh, know, uh, made to face trial in the court, because what he had done was something that was unheard of in the history of war. Usually in the war histories what you find is that. Uh, a uh, group of women put captive by a group of soldiers uh, engaged in war and they would be used as comfort women for the sexual gratification of the soldiers. This is uniformly true for all wars, but here what happened there was this uh, no decorated officer who took uh, charge of a city of the enemy site and then he asked his soldiers to drag all women to a common place, a uh, road, a square there and said it was uh, an order from the higher authority that now my soldiers would rape the women here on the road. Okay. He was a witness, no? so as a commanding officer he was a witness to it, he gave this command, okay. women were uh, raped on the road in open. Okay. And then all these women were taken into custody, they were checked by these military doctors if they have been impregnated or not. All women okay, who later on the doctors confirmed that they are pregnant were kept in custody, they were given proper diet, so that they can give birth to babies. During the trial in the court when he was asked that why did you do this weird act and you know what did he say? He said that this is victory forever according to me and how do you define victory forever? He said that no, uh, when these children will be born, they will never ever dare to look at our country, because they would know that they are born of this episode. I want the whole of the enemy camp to be like that one can go up to this weird extent. No? Now, when you decide that you would sprinkle uh, know, chemicals, so that uh, people uh, who are in a given geographical locality, they will all perish, they will all die. When you ensure that you will uh, know every Friday, when a group of people who do not practice the faith that I uh, believe in, when they assemble for a mass prayer, I will every Friday I will explode a bomb there. Okay. So, in uh, limited quota I will kill them okay. each uh, weekday, 
a time will come in 30 years when none of my uh, opponent will remain okay when you decide that you will uh, know get rid of your enemies saying that they are your own babies okay these are all uh, weird forms of uh, know showing aggression okay and this is basically uh, driven by the fact that you want to manipulate control okay the other group now what is interesting is uh, that most of the aggressive behavior are result of social practices that reinforce such activity and therefore it is neither hostile in motivation nor defensive in outcome so basically suggesting the same thing that if you have been born and brought up in a hostile environment in an aggressive environment for you expression of aggression is not defense for you your aggressive behavior is not hostile okay because you know that this is the way of life okay for others it might not be so but for you this is what it is now the primitive reaction to restricted bodily movement is usually frustration okay and frustration you know usually uh, will uh, reflect itself into some form of an aggressive retaliation if you look at uh, small babies no just hold their hand firmly <coughs> means basically you do not allow them the opportunity of free movement of their body part whether it is hand whether it is foot and then you realize that the baby will start you no know, making attempts to free himself or herself and if you still don't allow that the baby will start crying okay and here crying is basically asking for an external help because i want to enjoy the freedom of free bodily movement this is something that you realize uh, to be true for all animals no all animals would love to be uh, free okay and therefore we should revisit our whole construct of having pets okay or even putting them into some captive uh, location what usually happens is that uh, gradually with uh, more and more of uh, the worldly experience you realize that uh, the form of aggression the reflection of frustration and aggression gradually changes okay in the beginning you remember we had discussed in the definition that it could be action oriented it could be verbal it could be even symbolic okay later on we'll uh, know even discuss uh, know there could be a case of displacement of anger okay that you are angry at me but you shout at somebody else so you displace your anger even those possibilities are there but then this whole uh, idea of enjoying freedom is something that we never lose and my guess is perhaps this is the reason perhaps why uh, human beings in their uh, whole uh, history wherever they were they developed this strategy of handcuffing people so if you violate the norm those who have the authority of implementing the norms they will get you handcuffed okay you would be put in prison so basically it is telling you that you won't be given the freedom of free bodily movement okay you won't be given the freedom of uh, say enjoying uh, your autonomy of uh, you know, expression freedom of uh, movement okay freedom of movement is something that you would realize people usually do not want to compromise with okay and therefore uh, you realize that uh, more and more of frustration gradually comes when you start cutting off these freedom so if you do not allow people to express themselves if you do not allow people to move the way they want okay you realize that it becomes a source of frustration for people okay if you are told uh, that uh, do not it's an advisory that do not carry mobile phones to the classroom okay advisory means this is just uh, you no know, a piece of suggestion you are free to accept it you are free not to accept it uh, I am sure that all of you will try to avoid this advisory. You are told that you are supposed not to 
carry mobile phones to the class this is an office order okay and still you would realize that a group of students would try their best carrying the mobile phone this is true even in the jails also no you have raids in the jails where you have sim card batteries mobile phones confiscated by the jail authorities something which is not allowed is found so this basically means that when you restrict the freedom of individuals they developed certain degree of frustration and in their attempt to bypass the frustration to get rid of it they might use the other strategies. And now we come to an interesting hypothesis given by Dollard and his colleagues very old hypothesis called frustration aggression hypothesis which basically says that you have sources in your environment that frustrates you and your frustration actually fuels your aggression. Okay. So, it explains frustration as the state that emerges when circumstances interfere with a goal response. So, you have a goal to achieve okay, and while you are proceeding toward your goal a barrier is put in between this barrier irritates you and the moment you are frustrated it adds to your anger. Okay. Other studies who have tried to uh, know validate if uh, frustration aggression hypothesis is true have found very interestingly that this frustration aggression relationship it is contingent upon your proximity to the goal how close you are to the goal. So, if I am just at the starting point I have just started and there was a barrier then I am not that frustrated and therefore, I am not that aggressive, but if I come close to the goal and then you put a barrier then it is a great source of aggression to me and therefore, I become more angry coming to when I was explaining question to her know that why I do not compute average. Okay. If you are you know if this the contingency between uh, the two the, the goal and the frustration if it is you know, the distance is far off. So, today if I do not tell you what uh, the average was but you see only the score you are happy at least I had thought that even the corrected answer sheet would not come finally, it has come back something is there if not 27 if not 30 at least 10, but something is there. And the day when you are given the class average you forget what you got. Okay. So, you might remember huh, I got something it is no 6.7 less than the average, but it is okay. But if you are given a score, if you are given average, then immediately you start getting involved into all types of calculations. This is basically the proximity situation. No? So, the more and more proximate you are to the goal, higher is the degree of frustration. I would like to deviate a bit. Uh, there are very interesting studies in uh, uh, one of the interesting areas of psychology, which is still very under researched aviation psychology. Okay. Now, aviation psychology is still no it is a very very in a its primitive phase not very good research is not well researched good research is, but not well researched. One very interesting example uh, comes to my mind from the aviation psychology research. Uh, this is in terms of uh, uh, the man machine interfaces. No? So, when the pilot and the co pilot when they fly their uh, planes okay, and their flight meets an accident. <coughs> now, accident analysis has revealed two very interesting things from a psychological viewpoint. One, if the pilot is too dominant in nature, so personality characteristics wise, if the co pilot is submissive and the pilot is aggressive dominant, okay, this can lead to an accident, because there is a greater failure of coordination between the two. So, the input that the flight engineer and the co pilot gives to the uh, captain, captain has a tendency to overrule it. Okay. And two very interesting example from other research is that when the flights take off and when the pilots put the flight on the autopilot mode and when they watch the computer generated outcomes of uh, the flight mechanism, it has been realized that till halfway. 
Okay. So, if I have to travel from this place to that end, okay, till halfway the pilots show the tendency of accepting the outcome of the computer generated outcomes. Okay. So, fuel, temperature, balance, aerodynamic outcomes. No? So, you accept whatever the computer generated outcome shows you on the screen. But if you cross halfway, means you are more close to the landing port, okay, you have a tendency to recheck whether the computer is giving the correct outcome or not. Okay. And that is the reason why you realize that most of the air crashes takes place after the flight has completed half its journey. Because after taking off, if there is a possibility, the pilot show a tendency to return back to their uh, place of origin. Okay. But after half way, okay, unless it is uh, no, very, very glaringly visible to the pilots that it will crash and therefore, they will search for the nearby uh, airports. Okay, there is a tendency of negating, refuting <coughs> or doubly checking the outcomes of the computer generated uh, systems. Okay. So, again it comes to how close you are to the goal. More closer you are to the goal, the more it frustrates you, the far off you are you say chalo chalo ya, you leave it. Okay. So, if you are told that you have to qualify JE and right in class 1 you are told this okay, and you fail class 1 examination, it would not hurt you. Okay, JE is too far off, who knows what it is. Okay. But say class 12th, Kota or Hyderabad, 2 years there okay, and then missed by few ranks. No? It is a great source of displeasure, great source of discomfort. Okay. So, this is what frustration aggression hypothesis research shows that the more and more closer you are to the goal and the barrier does not allow you to achieve it, higher is the degree of frustration, higher is the degree of frustration, more and more aggressive you become. Okay. Now, as our behavior is susceptible to conditioning, it is found that even sight, sound or even the view, any form of signal related to the source of frustration can trigger ag anger. So, it is not that if you have the barrier, it should be a glaringly visible barrier. Okay. So, it could be even uh, something that is remotely connected to it, that can also trigger that uh, great sense of discomfort in you. Not a good example to quote here in the class. Uh, there was a place in uh, northern part of India long back, long, long back. Uh, when India had a, a, a periodic history of communal riots, every 4, 6 months there would be some communal riot in some part of India. There was a, a sudden explosion of a, a communal riot in that locality, many people died. Okay. And then later on, uh, the superintendent of police of that very uh, district was charged with the fact that he was basically you know taking sides of the majorities. Okay. Because what according to uh, some of the reports what he had done was he asked the majority group to withdraw, the aggressive minority was one side and then he asked the police force to open fire and many people died many, many things took place and as you know how uh, the court of law works in our country and how the civil servants, they escape many, many things. Okay, they have the what you call certain things in their service that safeguards them against many, many things. So, all that thing happened. Later on, he confessed to somebody, I would not disclose all those details. He later on confessed to somebody that I do not regret what I did. And he said that my elder brother was also a superintendent of senior superintendent of police, when he was posted somewhere in western part of Uttar Pradesh. And again during a communal riot, he according to his story, one of somebody from the minority group had come and assassinated his elder brother. 
the senior superintendent of police at that time was killed in one of the riots here in western UP. The younger brother later on becomes a police officer is posted far off minimum no 900, 1000 kilometer away from that place. Okay. Ask the police force to open fire on uh, one group and later on rationalizes that uh, I do not regret giving such orders. I have lost my own brother in one such communal riot. Now, his brother was dead long back 17 years back, okay, brother was not there. The same group of people who stabbed his brother was not there in this group, but then you have that strong association. So, this is what it says no? that it could be sight oh this is the same group, this was the group that had killed my elder brother. Similar type of situation communal riot oh, so same sound no? there are some slogans oh the same slogan, okay. but very interestingly you would realize that uh, no, such type of slogans for example, need not always become the source of frustration for you, it can no fuel energy in you also. Uh, take for example, uh, when uh, you have the group of uh, armed forces okay, and because they are uh, in our country they are divided into regiments each regiment had its own slogan no for example no har har mahadev for one uh, regiment okay jai ma bhavani for the other regiment okay now you have these are basically religiously colored type of uh, slogans but they are used by the armed forces and every time they do it okay before they take up their arm for fighting the enemy so, uh, this was all about uh, this hypothesis how frustration and aggression gets club, uh, when we meet tomorrow we will continue with it.